Hello. Uh, so we are uh, going to continue with uh, file systems in operating system. And uh, in last week, uh, we were talking about the alternatives of file system designs. And today we are going to talk about uh, specific uh, file system implementations. Uh, basically, we are going to cover uh, FAT, uh, Unix file system, and we will mention a couple of others, including NFS, journal Unix file system, and so on. Uh, then we will talk about the integrity of the file system and the crash recovery issues. Uh, so, the file system actually had one uh, extra uh, think uh, we need to uh, care about, which is the uh, division of the disk. Uh, usually, uh, we may have uh, one file system per uh, hard drive. However, uh, this is not the case. Sometimes we may need to logically um, divide a hard disk into multiple parts so that we can have uh, logical uh, parts that are used for different purposes like swap space, uh, two different partitions, user file system versus operating system uh, file system and so on. We can have uh, that partition, uh, that division, which we call partitioning. Uh, so basically we have some partitioning mechanisms. Uh, one that are currently in PC world or desktop computer world we have uh, MBR and GPT uh, partition types. Contemporary systems use, use uh, GPT. Older systems use MBR. Uh, it is the partition table structure. Partition table is not uh, something complicated. It is just uh, uh, after the MBR, the boot uh, record, the first sector of the uh, hard disk, uh, we have such a table uh, giving us the information about how many partitions uh, there are on the disk and their sizes, starting uh, sectors, and their uh, types, if they are bootable or not, and so on. We have those information. Um, uh, we can have different formatting for each of them, and the operating system uh, recognizes this partition table and uh, logically assigns different devices, different volumes uh, per partition uh, so that we can have different file systems or different purposes can be uh, assigned to each uh, partition by the operating system. So uh, this is how they are divided. Uh, each partition will behave like a standalone um, hard drive or you can say logical uh, disk and that logical disk can be uh, formatted in order to get some uh, file system structure. Uh, uh, the uh, one of those uh, partitions have some specific boot uh, flag so that if it is uh, set, the system tries to boot from that. This is the MBR uh, story. Uh, in newer systems, newer des desktop systems, we have UEFI, uh, which is a specific partition, uh, which can be directly uh, loaded by BIOS and can be booting with some uh, extra uh, features. Um, if you look into each partition, the logical disk, uh, there is a boot block so that uh, the primary boot block on the hard disk loads this uh, boot block, jumps into that location, and it can boot an operating system kernel. Uh, then we have a um, super block. In most of the file system structures, we have this telling us the geometry of the partition uh, and internal structure of the partition, size of a sector, size of a, a segment or block, and how many uh, groups are there, uh, and so on. The start of each metadata uh, block is given that. Then followed by the remaining part of the uh, fast and specific part, basically. Superblock is also 
Python specific part, like how free space is managed, how the uh, profile information, data allocation uh, informations, uh, data block mappings are stored, directories, files, and data follows in most of the cases. Uh, we have many of them. Uh, in in uh, MS-DOS world, the PC world, FAT was one of the oldest uh, file systems. In the Unix side, we have uh, UFS and descendants of UFS, Unix file system, followed by FFS. In the Unix world, we have X234, it goes like that, and uh, there are different implementations of that. Uh, there are also specific uh, separate implementations like RiserFS, XFS or BTRFS, uh, open source words. Uh, the uh, Windows uh, switched to uh, NTFS uh, in like uh, late 90s or mid 90s, uh, which was uh, capable of having uh, larger volumes uh, and uh, more uh, features. Uh, the MacOS. Uh, introduced HFS uh, and then uh, HFS plus uh, high performance file system they were calling that then uh, in later uh, versions they switched to Apple file system AFS uh, the um, for uh, CD DVD like optic media we have uh, a standard ISO 9660 it covers both the video uh, disk formats uh, plus this file system uh, format, which is specifically designed for uh, CD devices, DVD devices, and Blu-ray devices also use that. Uh, we have uh, solid state disk uh, specific file system designed for them. Uh, JFFS2 uh, is one of them, and there are uh, different uh, uh, versions of that. Uh, used by Android. Also, uh, the later versions of MacOS uh, AFS is also designed with SSD disks in mind. Uh, and there are uh, new generation uh, file systems for service like ZFS, BTFS, and so on. And we have network file systems, so we have a large list of file systems supported by different operating systems. Um, uh, FAT is an old system, as I said before, it was designed for very uh, small uh, disk sizes, basically floppy drives. Uh, so I used them when I was a student. It is uh, 360 kilobytes uh, uh, floppy disk, and uh, later uh, came uh, high density, uh, smaller uh, floppies, like 1.4 megabytes. Uh, and FET was working on them, uh, designed for that. Then we had uh, 10 megabyte hard disks, 20 megabyte hard disks, so we around that, and we continued with FAT. Uh, so basically, we talk about uh, the features of FAT. Uh, it is a, a linked list implemented on an array on disk, which keeps uh, data block mapping. Uh, so uh, we had either this free list uh, or uh, the linkage of a file, the data blocks, as a link list kept on FAT. Uh, so this link this can be used uh, for file to block mapping and also free list, but uh, the actual implementation of FAT to, uh, does not use this free list on FAT, only uh, file to data mappings are kept. Uh, for choice of uh, file attributes, they uh, chosen to keep them in directory blocks. So in the directory entry, we uh, not only uh, provide file name to data block mapping, but also the file attributes like protection, uh, the file type, uh, the timestamps are kept in the directory blocks. Uh, so basically the identifier is the first block of FAT. So FAT entry can be used as an identifier of the uh, file. 
Uh, but uh, from that identifier, you cannot go back to the uh, file attributes. So we are going to talk about that. So this is the uh, structure of the uh, FAT. So we have uh, the boot sector. We have extra fast information. Most of those information, uh, most of the information is in boot sector. But uh, addition, uh, in addition to that, FAT32 keeps some extra uh, information. There are two copies of uh, FAT, uh, so that when um, you have bad blocks on the FAT area, you can use this uh, second copy mirror of that. Uh, for in case of uh, bad blocks, losing FAT will be disaster. You will lose most of your file information. So that's why meta information is duplicated this way. Uh, then followed by root directory uh, in uh, FAT32, uh, they put that information in uh, uh, this extra fast information of boot sector. So root is any place on data area, and we have a mapping from this uh, super block area to that. Uh, so in boot sector, we have volume name, number of bytes per sector, to your sector size. Uh, how many sectors there are in a cluster and number of clusters in the hard disk and number of fat copies, at least two copies you should have. You can also have extra copies. Uh, so basically fat is nothing but an array of pointers and each pointer point to an absolute uh, cluster position uh, on hard disk. So it is like cluster identifiers, your cluster numbers. Uh, and uh, so it looks like this one. So that is nothing but an array this way. And first two entries are reserved for FAT ID and other purposes. And the remaining arrays are, uh, the remaining elements are uh, initially zero, meaning uh, all uh, uh, clusters are empty. So uh, the second one denotes the second cluster. Three denotes second uh, data cluster. Four data cluster. So of course we have an offset uh, from the beginning so that uh, the data clusters uh, start after FAT. And these are uh, free by default. Uh, the, depending on type of fat, uh, we have a different length for each uh, element of the array. In FAT12, uh, it is basically for uh, small floppy disks, so that keeping fat small is an important issue. Uh, they use 24 bits for two entries. That means three bytes per two entries. Uh, so you divide uh, one of the bytes in uh, the middle and left and right are different. So you, you, you have to use some bitmap to get most significant four bits and least significant, less, least significant four bits into uh, two different entries. In FAT16, we have 16 bits. and In FAT32, instead of 32, we have 28 bits uh, per entry. It's four bytes, but uh, the uh, most significant six bits are not used. Uh, so uh, when uh, this number, the FAT entry is minus one, uh, two complements, uh, minus one, uh, basically FFFFFF, uh, it indicates the end of list marker there. So the uh, file ends there. there. There are no more records in the linked list. So it is linked list termination. Uh, in order to allocate a, a cluster in, uh, FAT, you need to get uh, search for an entry which is zero. So basically, initially in this case, but in this state, but uh, as you use the file system, you will see uh, this list will be fragmented and you will be looking for a zero in, as a linear search. Uh, so this is a picture of uh, FAT after being used by files. So we have uh, 3, 4, 8, 9, 14, 15 are the free blocks. 
and a file A has an entry point at FAT is two. That means the first data block is this one. This one points to seven, seven points to six, six points to here, 13, and it is the last record uh, of the file. That means my file is at two, seven, six, 13, and that's, that's all. So we, my file consists of four clusters and they are them uh, from the linked list. And file B is, on the other hand, uh, it starts at five. That means this is my first data block. And it goes to 10, 10 to 11, and 11 to 12, and it is it. That means my file has one, two, three, four blocks, uh, and all the others are empty. Uh, so as you can see, it doesn't have to be continuous, and it may be some sort of spaghetti-like. Uh, so it doesn't have to be in increasing order uh, uh, or uh, continuous areas. But uh, as long as there are continuous areas, but tries to allocate continuous areas. So if you have uh, five zeros, so usually you'll get uh, succeeding elements in the FAT located for the uh, same file. So finding end block of a file, as you can see here, is not that easy in FAT. So what you need to do is you need to have a linked list traversal. So you start from some uh, end value, uh, so, and you will have uh, decrementing this n value as long as you get not minus one, f is fat n in the next iteration, fat n, fat n. So, this is like next in the linked list. And if you follow that n times, you will see n block. Uh, if fat is on this, this is almost uh, impossible. Uh, so, basically, what we have is uh, we have uh, fat in main memory. So we rely on caching mostly, and we assume that fat fits in the main memory and we access uh, fat uh, in the main memory so that we can do the, all those linear search for uh, an empty block, empty cluster, and linear search for random access of a file. Uh, assume this is a four gigabyte file with a cluster size, let us say, uh, even one megabyte. So that means 4,000 traversals of that. Okay. Uh, one megabyte is a very large number for clusters. Uh, uh, what about the directories? Uh, directories like are like uh, plain data blocks. So as if you are accessing uh, the binary file, you are accessing the di directories. However, directories are not uh, allowed uh, to be accessed directly. So you cannot just open it and write any byte you like in a directory. Operating system will not allow it because it's a spe special data type. Uh, so it has its own uh, primitives of system calls like open directory, read directory, and so on, so that you can access the content uh, in a read-only manner. If you like to access it in read-writes, uh, you use, for example, uh, make directory, rm directory, uh, unlink a file, and so on, or, um, uh, remove a file, or change attributes of a file, and so on. Uh, we have uh, 32 bytes and three, so it is like an, each directory is an area of 32 bytes uh, structures. Uh, first uh, 11 bytes are file name. Uh, so if it is smaller, we have space padding at the right. Uh, we have uh, attributes. If it is a read only, archive, hidden, or system file. Uh, so we have those uh, bits are here. Uh, in uh, one byte, one byte contains that attributes. 
uh, time of date, uh, so time within the date, time of uh, day, this should be day, by the way. Uh, so, um, so this is day. Time of day uh, is represented by two bytes. Uh, so basically, uh, our minute uh, seconds information uh, fits in 16 bits. Uh, however, it is if you use just uh, seconds counter, it will be something like 80,000. So it doesn't fit in two bytes. So what they do is they uh, have a smaller uh, resolution. So what they do is uh, last bit of the second is not used. So we will have plus, mi plus one, minus one resolution. So we have uh, our five, uh, I believe minute six and seconds five. So it is, the counter is like from zero to 31 seconds counter is zero to 31, not uh, zero to 60. So it's a two seconds counter. Uh, the date uh, is a five bit day, four bits month, and seven bits year. Uh, so it, year is since 1980, so we will have some problem in uh, 22nd century, start of the 22nd century. The file size is two bytes, uh, not two bytes, it's four bytes, so we have some mistakes here. By so file size is four bytes, uh, so okay, so four bytes. Uh, this is something uh, controversial because the, this linked list of us, ours in uh, fact, uh, can be arbitrary length, so it can be a single file, can cover all of the fat. That means if you have like 10 gigabytes volume, it can be a single file because it's a linked list. There is no limit on linked list. Uh, however, this size, uh, this uh, four bytes is the only place you keep the size information and terminating uh, our uh, file. As a result, because of this four byte limit, uh, we have this uh, four gigabyte limit of file size, regardless of your volume size and so on. 10 bytes reserved for you, uh, future use, but it is not used. Um, So this is the internal uh, of the uh, FAT directory entry, eight plus three, one byte attributes, uh, one byte for the, about the extensions and so on. Uh, this is in centiseconds limit. So this remaining part of the time is kept on here. These are the extensions parts. The, in FAT 16, this is not used. Uh, the creation time, creation date, last access date, uh, and time and date uh, of last access, I believe. No, this is creation time, creation date, so modification date, I believe, are kept here. Uh, the first cluster, so this is uh, our, uh, basically these two, values, start high and start gives us the FAT entry. So the order of the file in the FAT table, uh, basically it is the, uh, uh, start high is left shifted 16 bits, and it, it, which is combined by start, that means in total, it is 30, uh, two bit, uh, 32 bits information, start high, left shifted 16, and start is uh, ended. So you will end up in this 32 bits in uh, FAT32 uh, used here. So uh, this is how FAT32 uses this uh, 
so-called uh, resort area. Okay. Um, So oh, there's uh, some additional uh, information uh, also kept here. The name zero has special meaning, the first uh, byte of the name. Uh, if it is zero, uh, that means uh, the directory table ended. So this is the, this, uh, the previous one was the last entry. There, there are nothing more uh, to look up in the directory table. Otherwise, you continue as in the fat chain, we can have as large as possible directory data, and that data can have arbitrary number of 32 bytes directory entries. Uh, we also have some Thumbstorm characters. So this one, if you use this one, the file uh, is marked as deleted. And uh, instead of, uh, deleting the entry and shifting all of the directory entries, uh, FAT just puts that uh, thumbstone uh, character. As a result, uh, the operating system assumes file does not exist and FAT entries are deallocated and so on. Uh, but uh, uh, thanks to this, we have an access to first entry in the uh, FAT so we can have uh, operations like undelete, like undeleting a file and so on. So all this uh, small files can be recovered here. Uh, so basically when we uh, try to delete a file, we deallocate its uh, fat entries and then uh, we uh, put name zero as this thumbstone. Uh, until 95, uh, the longer file names uh, wasn't supported by uh, Microsoft DOS uh, with Windows 95. They, uh, Windows 95, they came up with uh, this VFAT uh, entries. We use dummy entries preceding the original entry. So what we have is we have uh, invalid uh, entries that are skipped by uh, DOS implementation. Uh, as many entries we like than the uh, working entry. All those preceding entries uh, can be used as this long file name entries. So it is like uh, 13 bytes uh, each of those entries. So you can have, for example, if you have 10 of those, you will have 130 byte length uh, long uh, file name possible. Uh, pretty indirect way, but it works in the VFAT. And the original name is also uh, kept. Uh, the directory table grows like a file, so you add new files and so on. And the thumbstone character will uh, delete. So if you create, for example, a 1 million file and then delete 909,000, you can have uh, those uh, 9,900, 9, uh, 99,900 something uh, uh, entries and the last one. Uh, of course, you can shrink it if you like, uh, if you are careful. Uh, how uh, we look up a file in this path structure for all cluster of the directory, uh, it consists of directory entries until we uh, If the I is invalid, so it is like a, a LFN, okay? If it is LFN, we continue with the next iteration, we ignore that. Uh, if uh, the first character of the name is zero, that means it is uh, end of directory. So we return minus one, not found. If the file name equals the uh, the name entry of the directory, we return directory entry. Basically, uh, the most important one is, of course, it's fat uh, pointer. Uh, so, block size is block size or cluster size uh, is the uh, one of the most important parameters in fat, as we have 
larger hard disks available on the market, uh, the FAT uh, became insufficient uh, to cover them. So what they uh, came up as increasing the uh, cluster size to support uh, larger hard disks. Uh, so we have, uh, depending on uh, the cluster size, your FAT will be too large or too small. So you, you have to choose it. Uh, an appropriate value so that it will fit into cache so you will have fast access to most of the operations. Uh, if you uh, choose a large cluster size like one megabyte for example for 100 bytes file you are going to use one megabyte so you will have internal fragmentation. Most of the space within the uh, cluster will be wasted. If you choose a small cluster size uh, it is bad for uh, locality, that means uh, your file will not be uh, covered in uh, consecutive uh, sectors. Also, you will have a large FAT. So, a second advantage, disadvantage is the FAT size. So, if you look into performance of FAT, random access, linear scan. Uh, changing attributes of a file, you go to directory entry and update, it's not that. Uh, this size is limited, uh, so you need to increase cluster size. Uh, and if you have small clusters with large hard disk, you will have uh, large FAT. Uh, so in FAT32, we have uh, uh, it is like. Uh, 256 million entries and each of them is four bytes, so it will be very large number. We are going to have the figures. We are going to see the figures. Uh, and because of the size field in directory entry uh, is 32 bits, the largest possible file size, <clears throat> regardless of your cluster size, regardless of the fat size and so on, uh, your hardest size, it is four gigabytes. So you cannot have, for example, uh, a movie file, for example, uh, HD movie will not fit on uh, fat. So th th there is this joke, fat gets fat. So it's, it's something fat. Even in memory, it can be very difficult to manage. So we have a couple of <coughs> figures uh, for that. In uh, FAT32, we can have, uh, because of this 12 bits, uh, limitation you can have only uh, four kilo uh, entries uh, of fat and each one will uh, uh, occupy uh, three bytes as a result you will have uh, 12 kilobytes of uh, fat size pretty good it fits in main memory however um, depending on your uh, cluster size uh, half a kilobyte, 16 kilobytes, and 32 kilobytes. You can cover a floppy disk like 2 megabytes, 64 megabytes, or 128 megabytes at most. Okay. Uh, the, the larger cluster size will have uh, bad internal fragmentation. In fact, 16, we have uh, 16 bits uh, for entries. That means we have 64 kilo entries in FAT, and uh, each entry is two bytes, uh, so 128 kilobytes of FAT size in memory. If you use half kilobytes clusters, it will be 64 megabytes, two gigabytes, and at most you can, if you, of course you can use larger uh, uh, cluster size, but 32 is a good upper bound for performance, so it is, uh, four gigabytes limit. With uh, FAT32, uh, we have 28 bits uh, uh, for entry and uh, addressing. That means we will have 200, 256 mega entries. Each keeps uh, four bytes, so it is one gigabyte FAT size, which is quite large. So we usually do not prefer using that much entries. So we keep uh, fat or smaller uh, value. That's why they didn't use 32 uh, here, 28 is a 
or appropriate value. So we can keep this, for example, if you like to keep this 128 megabytes, for example, you can use uh, one eighth of this number. Okay, so smaller fat size will be preferable in order to get uh, advantage of uh, cache. Of course, if you have sufficient memory, you can give it one gigabyte as well. Uh, so uh, in this picture, we can have half terabytes or 16 terabytes, but and 32 terabytes can fit in. Uh, but as I said before, uh, if you like uh, uh, to make this fit in 100 megabytes, for example, a reasonable value, you should divide all of them with eight, for example. So a sufficient value can be, for example, like eight terabytes and no one uh, formats a terabyte disk with fat because of those reasons. Uh, what about Unix? In the Unix, uh, we use this indexed uh, structure for data block mapping. Uh, also, uh, from uh, different uh, historical implementations, we have additional uh, concepts like cylinder groups and so on. Uh, so we start with the boot area. We have a super block. Super block defines your uh, block size. Uh, in addition to that, uh, number of uh, cylinder groups in your disk, and at each cylinder group, how many inodes and how many uh, data blocks exist. Uh, so basically, um, uh, we divide hard disk into the cylinder groups in order to get. Uh, one important efficiency, which is the locality. So the idea here is, uh, so uh, if you have data blocks here, there's uh, allocation information, and the I nodes are in the same cylinder group, most probably. We don't guarantee that, but most probably it is like that. That means if you are uh, dealing with that file, you are actually living in the same cylinder group, data I know, data I know, all of them are in the same area. And if you remember our discussion about this, disk hats moving forwards and backwards uh, uh, with scan algorithm or C-scan algorithm, having it, everything in the uh, same uh, cylinder group has an important advantage. So that's why uh, in, in order to prevent uh, the data being in the starting area of the hard disk and the inode is in the end of the hard disk and allocation information is in the middle. So you don't have to do that head movement anymore. So that's uh, the reason behind their uh, design. Uh, the uh, uh, the super block uh, containing this uh, cylinder group geometry is repeated in each cylinder group. And the reason is again integrity. This has an important information uh, because it tells the starting sector of the allocation information, I know, then data blocks. And you don't like to lose that super block because of bad block on hard disk and so on. So you repeat that in each cylinder group. And if you have a bad block in the original super block, you can recover hard disk from this super block copies. In the uh, cylinder group header, we have all this allocation information. Uh, the UF UFS uses bitmap allocation, so one bit per inode and uh, one bit per data block is used to represent the allocation information. Uh, followed by inode blocks and data blocks uh, will give you uh, the UFS. A super block has this geometry, number of cylinder groups, and how many inodes and data blocks per cylinder group. And this tells us something important. A uh, number of uh, inodes and data blocks are fixed on custom creation, so it cannot grow. Number of inodes cannot grow, or number of data blocks cannot grow. Uh, we have a mount statistics. Last, last time it is mounted, and the state of the uh, hard disk and so on uh, is uh, 
put in the, in, in the super block as well. We have cylinder groups. So this is for uh, locality. Uh, so we have uh, this mid bitmap. So we will have n inodes, m data blocks. So we will have n plus m uh, bits uh, in the cylinder group. And if you divide that, that many blocks are spent for this allocation information. Uh, the bitmap blocks are followed by inode blocks, uh, which contains the inode information I'm going to talk about in a moment, and then followed by data blocks. And if you remember the index, index allocation, index mapping, uh, the inode blocks uh, point to the data blocks, and data blocks contain the uh, actual uh, content of the uh, files. Uh, this fixation has actually two meanings. The first meaning, number of files are fixed. Those inodes uh, represent the number of files that you can create. So you put an upper bound on number of different files you can create. Uh, also, you fix again uh, with uh, data blocks. You fix again uh, another uh, thing, which is with data blocks, you also fix the uh, area reserved for files. That means, assume you have only one file and you use uh, let's have a marginal number, 1 million inodes. 1 million inode takes 128 megabytes. 128 megabytes are used for inodes and they cannot be used for, it cannot be used for data. For even a single, uh, assume your file system is very sparse, you only have 10 files, you don't need 1 million entries, 1 million different files, you cannot use that um, megabytes of uh, area for your files because inodes are fixed. So uh, those uh, fixations have disadvantages, uh, but we can use reasonable numbers uh, on file creation. So if you have uh, too many files with small sizes, you may think to increase inode size on file system creation. If you have large files without too many uh, distinct files required, you may have a small number of inodes and remaining part can be used for uh, file content. But you have to decide on that. This is the bad thing about the disadvantage of UFS. So inode uh, looks like this. It is like a administrative uh, record per file. So if you have a file on your file system, there is an inode for that. And all directory entries will point to this inode. So it is like the entry point of the file. And it also contains the uh, metadata or the attributes of the file. So uh, type of the file, number of links. If you remember the hard link discussion, uh, the hard link to that file is kept in the inode as well. The owner's credentials, uh, the size of the file, it is 64 bits. Uh, this is from X2 uh, or 3 of uh, Linux, so it is 64 bits large enough. Uh, we have time value, which is basically 32 uh, bits integer in older system, newer system, it is larger uh, from 1970, first of January, number of seconds. So this is access time, modification time, and change time. Access time, read, write, any type of access modification is the last write of the file, and C time is the uh, attribute change of the file. So for example, owner change, the per, uh, permission change, etc., which affects inode modification <coughs> is the C time. So all these uh, attributes are affecting C time. Uh, then we have this. Uh, this many direct blocks, 
So they point directly first block of the file will be zero of this and one and so on. So you will have the data block pointers stored here. Basically they are 32 bits integers. Uh, that means we have four giga blocks. So for example, if you have a, uh, giga, uh, not giga, four kilobytes block, for example, you can have uh, 16 terabytes uh, can be uh, uh, addressed with this uh, 32 uh, giga uh, pointers. Uh, okay. Uh, for larger block size, you can have larger hard disk uh, covers. Uh, then, as uh, this number, UFS and direct, is typically uh, 12, some number like 12, so it is uh, not larger. Uh, that means uh, your first 12 blocks, like 48 kilobytes of a file, are stored in this direct block source. Uh, pointed in this direct blocks. For remaining, you use indirect blocks. Uh, so you, we go to an indirect data block, specially allocated for this purpose. In that, we have uh, as many pointers that fits in that uh, data blocks are used, and we follow them to get the actual data blocks. And we have double and triple versions of that. I'm going to give you examples later. Then we have some extensions, some five legs, uh, the blocks and so on are used. So as a result, if you get this, we have uh, two, four, six, 14, like these are 28, we have 30 something. So we will have like 64 or something here with additional extend, extended uh, number of bytes, it will, typically fits in this 128 bytes. So each I, I know this 120 bytes. In a 4K block, we will have uh, like uh, 32 inode blocks can be stored in each data uh, 4K uh, block on hard disk. Uh, actually, if you look into this direct, indirect, and double indirect, triple indirect, you will have like uh, four levels of uh, trees, direct, blocks, indirect blocks are a tree of uh, depth two, double indirects are a tree of uh, depth three, and uh, triple indirects are tree of depth four. Um, so user ID, use group ID are just simply integers in Unix world. Uh, the permissions are 12 bits uh, values. We can talk more about them in the security chapter. Uh, basically for owners, uh, the people in the same group and the other uh, processes or users, we have a read write X permissions. So we have for three groups, we have three bits. That means we have nine uh, read write and execute bits uh, for, Directories execute mean, means access, X means access, read means list the directory. Uh, for regular files, uh, the file content can be readable, writable, or executed as a file. Uh, in addition, we have a set UID, set group ID, and less used uh, sticky bits, and we are going to talk about them in later chapters. And Windows and a special uh, extension called ACL, we can define this uh, per user, per group uh, way. The timestamps are the uh, access, modification, and attribute change times of the file. Uh, they are in resolution of seconds. Uh, in extended versions like X4, we can have more uh, resolutions and additional attributes, but uh, it's in terms of seconds. and. Uh, automatically, as you write a file, the modification timestamp is updated. When you read a file, last access is uh, updated. And when you change attributes like permissions, group, uh, owner, and so on, uh, the C time is updated. And this is the a picture of uh, this 
uh, inode uh, references. Uh, I'm not sure if I can zoom this, but. I cannot zoom it here. Unfortunately. But maybe if I choose. PowerPoint view, uh, we can zoom it to see it better. So it looks like this. We have uh, direct Glaxo first. 12 uh, Glaxo file can be accessed through uh, direct. If it is a larger number, like 13 block and later, we use an indirect block. Indirect block is like a data block. So it's like actually, it's in the area of data blocks. But it's if, for example, it has four kilobytes, there are four bytes entries, there are four, 1,024 entries. Each entry points to actual data. So 13 block is this one. 14 block is this one. It goes like uh, 1,036 something. It goes up to that. If it is larger, then it doesn't fit. So it is like uh, in uh, one kilo blocks, like four megabytes after four megabytes, this is not sufficient. So we have a double indirect. In the double indirect, we get an indirect block. Each indirect block uh, entry points to an indirect block, which has 1,024 in the typical value. So 1,024, 1,024, so you will have 1024 indirect block each having 1024 so we will have 1 million data blocks so each is 4 kilobytes so it goes like it brings you 4 gigabytes so up to 4 gigabytes uh, of the file you can use double indirect but it is not sufficient what about larger files in that case we will go for triple indirect we will get a, a triple indirect block each points to a double indirect block and each double indirect uh, block points to, and three points to an uh, indirect block, each points to the data block. That means we will have uh, 1,000, uh, 1,000, 1,000, one giga uh, data block entries. And those one giga uh, entries will point to four kilobytes, will, will give you four terabytes uh, file uh, length, not volume, but file length. So this is the, uh, picture uh, so, uh, so this is the so uh, in the typical case you can get as large as four uh, gigabytes and depending on the operating system, uh, the dialect, you can have different block size, different inode size. Uh, so for example, instead of eight kilobyte uh, blocks, if you use eight kilobyte data blocks, this numbers will change, of course, uh, number of entries and so on. So this is the, the algorithm you can use to get the end block. So basically, if it fits in indirect, if n is less than 12, uh, 12 is a typical number, uh, but can be different. You fit in here. Uh, and you, uh, you uh, subtract that 12 from n. Now you are looking for the rest if it is not if you didn't return, you are looking for a larger number. If it is uh, less than one kilobyte, so 1,000 entries, then that, mean, that means you are going to look for your uh, block in 
uh, indirect lock. So, so you read the indirect lock from the I naught pointer. From red block, which is this one, it is read into this array, you get the nth value and return it. If it is larger than 1,000, you have to subtract this 1,000, the preceding 1,012, uh, 1024 plus 12 entries. Now you, uh, if it is smaller than 1 million, that, that means you are looking your entries in double indirect. So in order to get that, you have to do some uh, integer division trick. So you read uh, the indirect block into your memory, double indirect block into your memory. Then uh, if you divide n by 1024, it is going to give you the next uh, indirect block, okay? So you follow that and read it in the memory. And if you take modulo 1024, you will get the offset written, the indirect block, the second one. And in this way, you are going to reach your uh, block. If it is even larger, that means you are going to, you need to go to this uh, triple indirect case. It is getting more, uh, slightly more difficult. So you get this uh, modulo of 1 million in the triple indirect block. And within that, you go that you go this, uh, sorry, division by 1 million, then modulo 1 million. And within that, you get 1024 division. And uh, within the red block, you get the offset 1024. And in this way, you can reach your data block. As you can see, the worst case, uh, how many reads do we do? So this is, assume we don't have, okay, so the, this is the worst, worst case. One, two, and three reads. In the triple indirect case, we read triple indirect in the I note. From that double indirect, from that indirect, from that we get the data. That means you need three extra data accesses, then you read the actual data block. So random access is not, uh, uh, so it, it it doesn't fit, uh, so, so in fact, we have assumption that it fits in memory. In this case, we don't have that assumption, uh, but uh, assuming those indirect blocks are in cache as well, you will not have that much uh, extra operations. Uh, so, uh, uh, the block pointers may contain zero. That means uh, that block does not have any value. Uh, so it is not in use. So that uh, doesn't mean a uh, file doesn't have that block. That means it is not allocated. So we have some lazy mechanism again here. Uh, if they are not used, like indirect pointers are not used, they are not allocated. And if a block uh, hasn't been written yet, doesn't contain any data, uh, there is no data allocated for that. Uh, if you have the largest possible possible file, we have uh, this much data used only uh, for uh, the uh, indirect block. So we have uh, one indirect. Uh, so this is I note, I believe this is uh, the indirect blocks, and this is the triple indirect blocks, okay? Uh, this is first indirect, this is uh, double indirect, and this is uh, the, uh, so this is the root of the double indirect, this is the leaves of the double indirect, and this is the root, first level and second level. So this many blocks are uh, wasted for uh, indirect blocks in the largest possible file. 
in smallest po possible file, which has zero bytes, only created, no data written, uh, no data blocks are allocated. Hence, direct blocks are null and not used. Uh, we also may have this uh, holes in a file uh, if your file system supports that. Uh, so we can uh, let us try to have that example for fun. So here. This is my Mac also. Let us try that. Uh, this one and seek is one billion. So this comment has uh, seek to one millionth, uh, one kilobyte location and write a single record. So I advance my pointer one million blocks, it's one gigabyte actually, and wrote just a single block, which is only zeros. And if you look into this uh, test one, you will see its size being one megabyte, one gigabyte. But if you look into size of that, the size will be four kilobytes. Uh, this is uh, Apple's file system, by the way, but it works similar to Unix, so you can have observed the same behavior. Uh, AFS is different than Unix, it doesn't use uh, Unix, but if you test this in your Linux device as well, you will see a similar result. So what happened? Uh, the thing happening here is, uh, since I am seeking an arbitrary location in my file, so going back to the presentation, since I am seeking to this, for example, this block, and only writing this block here, so this one, okay, since I am writing on this block, I am not interested in allocating the remaining part. So I just put zeros here. So I put a zero here, zero here, zero here. And since I don't use indirect locks, the indirect lock will be zero as well. Double indirect will be zero as well. And for triple indirects, I need to allocate this one. So this will exist but it will have uh, this one zero, okay? This one is allocated, this one is not allocated, this is zero. This and all of the remainders will be zero. I need to allocate this one, this one, this one, and the rest will be again be zero. So I don't allocate any of them, but only I need to allocate this one, okay? So this is my file. Let's use another color. So this is my file. So I only need to allocate all files in between, all indirect pointers in between. Okay, that will be sufficient. Uh, so this is the case in Linux. You may see, for example, instead of 4K, you, will, you may see, for example, 12 Ks. The idea is the same. Uh, So this is called the holes in the file system. Sometimes very useful. Uh, what about the directory entries? Directory entries are uh, only containing the file name to inode mapping in UFS. We don't need to keep the attributes as, as it is in the FAT. Uh, so, we have uh, this uh, entry, uh, which has a, a variable size. So we don't, we allocate, uh, so in the definition it is max length, but uh, we don't allocate this uh, D name. If our file is 
file name is three bytes, we only allocate four bytes for uh, the terminating zero. Uh, this will be four bytes plus this uh, initial overhead uh, here. So like uh, four, uh, six, eight plus four bytes. If it is 100 bytes, the file name is 100 bytes, it will be uh, eight plus 100. So it will be like that. Uh, so this mechanism gives us a completely uh, linear uh, mapping of the file. So it looks like this. Uh, first, the inode followed by the record length, followed by the name length. That means the record will be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve bytes. So it will be uh, padded to uh, align to the four bytes. Uh, so as a result, I have this padding and it will fit into this 12 bytes is my dot entry here. So 144, 123, this is my first entry. Followed by, sec followed by second entry directly, which is the I note, 12, two, and my entry is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, which is dot dot, the parent point, uh, parent directory I note. This is another I note 16, seven. That means one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So this is the desktop. Followed by another 16, convert to dot C, followed by another entry 20 in this case. So it will get one, two, three, four, five, So we, we have a problem here. This is not 16, this is 24. This should be 24. Sorry. So we have to correct that as well. So this should be Four instead of uh, 20. So we have uh, the unpuzzle that that should be 28. Okay, it should be 28. And the file name length is uh, 17. So 17 byte long, but we use uh, 28. And it goes like that, okay. And this is uh, the directory content corresponding to this uh, LS output. LS minus I will give you the I not numbers. So if you look at this, you will see this data block content, okay. The directory block has this data basically. This tells us something uh, about the director structure. Uh, if you like to access 10th entry in the directory block, what you should do, you should follow all these uh, you should follow 12, skip to 12, 12, skip to 12. 16 skip to 16, 16 skips to 16 and goes like, repeat that 10 times. So you 10 times linear scan of this director structures of uh, variable length. So this doesn't look like a good idea, but it is in memory. So it is not uh, something quite um, uh, difficult. But uh, if you have large number of files under a directory, like 10,000 entry directory, this may become some uh, problem. We are going to talk about that. 
so file lookup uh, again similar to tenth file uh, idea uh, we have sequential traversal of the full directory content so it will be uh, even it is cached it will be a linear secan uh, in the um, fact we had a similar picture we have to uh, it's a fixed size record but it was a fixed size record but it is uh, pretty much the same uh, the um, reads and uh, updates of a directory is in cache but still expensive uh, deleting a file is similar to deleting a line but we don't have this thumbstone character in fact we have to shrink the directory content so we have to uh, manipulate the directories uh, like that. Uh, so in order to uh, provide some efficiency here, uh, operating system keeps a directory cache. So basically it is a, a directory inode file name to a new uh, inode uh, mapping and it will increase the performance uh, a lot. But uh, the problem is uh, when you, for example, delete a file, you have to invalidate this cache, or if you unmount a file system, you have to invalidate it. Uh, and this cache also works, I believe, for other file systems as well. So the fat will take advantage of this as well. Uh, so traversal uh, can be done uh, as illustrated in the slides. So this is what the directory structure looks like. It looks like we have root directory having those entries. We have an inode. Uh, 132 is the data block. In that data block, there is another directory content, which has those. And AST is 26. In the 26 block uh, inode, we have 406 and 406 give us uh, another directory, and mbox will give you. 60 and in the 60 I know what you will see the data blocks containing this uh, mailbox file so the traversal will look like that this we start from the uh, root directory always and we know the I know of that uh, which is a part of the uh, super block uh, uh, not super block but it is like the uh, first uh, inode, so it is first inode of the file system contains the uh, root directory. So we start from that. Uh, we read the inode to it. We see that it's a directory type file uh, and read the content. And when you read the content, uh, we will see uh, that it's a directory and in the directory we traverse the directory for USR and when we found it as inode 6 we go to 6 inode to read it and in that inode we will see uh, its location on disk we read that block we also understand that the data type is directory so we uh, treat it like a directory as a result we go to uh, the content uh, mbox and mbox uh, for ast we repeat that uh, operation ast it will give us mbox and we will read the mbox so this is the uh, big picture of uh, file access we will have a better picture of that in the following slides so i'm going to show you that later in the virtual file system case uh, so I would like to stop for a while. Okay, um, I had to give a break. Uh, so uh, now we are continuing with the CD-ROM file system. The, um, in CD-ROMs and uh, optical disks, uh, one specific thing we have to know is we don't uh, have to, uh, sorry, we don't have a chance to uh, go randomly access and randomly write everyone on the optical disk. Optical disk uh, writing process is like a tape. Basically, we uh, start from the uh, 
uh, inner uh, most circle and we go out like this one. So this uh, writing procedure is like basically a tape. A tape is uh, rolled in uh, in a spiral shape, basically optical disc is something like that. So we cannot arbitrarily write an optical disc. What we have to do is we have to construct the file system and re write the uh, whole data. Uh, that's why uh, the design of this ISO 9660 uh, is basically built on uh, that idea in mind. Uh, the read-only data and uh, everything is compact so that we have directories followed by the, uh, the content. Uh, and in the first level of the standard, we have eight plus three like fat. We have limited uh, file size. Uh, we don't have much attributes of the files. In the uh, level two and three, we have additional files, but still uh, we have a limited. And this uh, two and three are not used by most of the systems. So uh, the we, uh, the people came up with some extensions. Rockridge is the one which gets uh, this limitations of uh, ISO 9660 is expanded, so we don't have that those limitations. Uh, we have um, uh, Unix style permissions and special files like dots and hyphens, etc., are added. Longer file names supported in. Uh, it's uh, in uh, Juliet, uh, in Microsoft, they came up with Juliet extension. We have uh, this Unicode characters are added, etc., and they are also supported. And some operating system both are supported, and also in the same um, uh, ISO uh, file system, we can add both of them. Uh, in Apple, we have uh, some uh, HFS had some features uh, supported by optical disk, but they are not supported by any other operating system. So uh, let's come to more uh, popular operating system by Windows, which is NTFS. NTFS is a modern operating, a modern file system uh, designed in uh, the 60s for NT Windows NT file system, and it is an expandable file system. So. They added new features uh, by time. Uh, and it uh, takes advantage of uh, a file structure on hard disk, like a data structure, the tree structure on hard disk. So basically, after the boot sector comes a, a master file table, keeping all this uh, metadata mapping on a B3 structures. Uh, followed by the data area, which con contains uh, the uh, block content. Uh, so everything in this uh, master file table, we have uh, different uh, records, different files on that table, keeping all metadata. Uh, MFT is one of the most important one. It keeps all of the uh, file to uh, data mapping along with the uh, directories. Uh, also, we have uh, attributes are uh, kept in uh, a different table. Uh, this, another uh, record is the bitmap record. It contains this location bitmap of the data area uh, and all this uh, block allocations are kept in this uh, bitmap, which is, which is uh, for NTFS perspective, it is like a file just a sequence of bytes, but internally it contains this allocation information. Uh, there are uh, many other uh, uh, supports by NTFS like hard links, uh, quotas, uh, journals, sparse files, uh, encryption of files, compression of files, and alternate data streams dot so that, for example, a file can have different versions combined in the uh, same file name, we can go those alternate stream to get the other versions, for example. So these are applications, the applications can use them. Uh, also viruses can use them. Uh, but 
so it is the nice thing about that is that such extensions can be added uh, later and uh, supported by the operating system in later versions. Uh, so they added some of those stuff later. Uh, the maximum partition size is 256 terabytes and maximum file size is uh, 16 terabytes. Uh, uh, we have an interesting file system, so I'd like to mention that a little bit of, uh, of that. In hard disk, we can have read write uh, direct access. In DVDs, we have read as direct, but write as sequential like a tape. Uh, so in order to write again, we need to erase the whole file system in the DVDs. So the design uh, change into this ESO file system. In a uh, solid state, we have something in uh, the between of the hard disk and DVDs. Uh, the direct access, uh, the access is direct. Uh, sorry. We have. So uh, I'm back uh, after the uh, power failure. Uh, so uh, the SSDs behave differently. We have uh, larger segments, uh, sizes like, for example, if you have uh, one kilobyte uh, block size, 60, 64 uh, kilobyte segments or larger. So it's really uh, multiple sort of blocks uh, that you can erase and you only uh, can write uh, the empty blocks. So uh, the idea is you uh, cannot arbitrarily overwrite data. So if you like to overwrite a data block, you have to completely erase segment containing that block and you have to write it back. Uh, and erase cycles are expensive in terms of uh, time and also in terms of uh, money because uh, device has limited uh, lifetime for erase cycles like 10,000 is a typical example. After 10,000 erase cycles, you will get some uh, uh, errors. So uh, the idea is uh, the metadata updates are too frequent in a, a traditional file system like FAT or Unix. So they came up with this log structure file system idea so that the file system is nothing but log records and following those log records, you can uh, update or uh, get the data, metadata. Each new write is a new uh, empty block erase. So it will grow like a, a tape as it is in the DVDs uh, and each record uh, invalidates preceding records. Uh, so it's, it looks like a linear, but it is not linear. So we have some structure. So the valid data is the last one. The last written data is the last, uh, the valid data block and the last written uh, metadata block is the uh, valid one. So it goes uh, like this. So I write this uh, file since each file write uh, ends up in some metadata update size of the file changes at least. So we have the inode is written as well. Uh, and inode points to the file. Then comes another block and inode changes. That means we have a new inode and that inode has reference to two uh, new blocks. The previous inode is invalidated by this one because last one is valid. Then comes another file and it has its inode, inode one. Then uh, we see to the beginning of the first file and write it again. That means data block is overwritten by the new block. That means we have an inode change and our new inode, which invalidates all previous inodes of the same file, the point to zero and one as mm. this data block and this data block. So at this instance uh, of this file system, if we uh, look into this file system, we will see this and this inodes are valid. And this one is pointing to this data. This one is pointing to this data. All others are invalidated data blocks. 
Uh, however, uh, we have an issue here, which I note is the valid one. Uh, so we have to maintain uh, the valid inodes as uh, a list. Uh, so uh, we can keep that in memory. However, uh, after the wood, recovering will cost too much. So uh, we can also add after each inode a mapping, which is inode mapping. That means which inodes are valid at current instance of time. Uh, and we can write that uh, too. So the idea will be like this. Inode mapping is this one, then the new inode. Then we have uh, a new file is written. So the inode mapping will point to the first file and the second file. And then we change the inode. So the first one and the second one. Um, and you can add further enhancement by segment summary. So we assume you have this uh, by consuming the space, you have reached the end of the uh, segment. We can have a segment summary uh, so that, for example, 128 kilobytes of data uh, was is about to be written. At the end, we have a segment summary having uh, the valid uh, inode mapping so that when we uh, remount the system or reboot the system, uh, we only get this uh, segment summaries for uh, the complete segments. And for incomplete segments, we have to traverse all of the uh, blocks to get them. Uh, but if you write them in some sequence, so we will have uh, many complete segments and only one or couple of incomplete segments. So only by looking at those segment summaries, we can recover uh, the mapping of the whole file system. Uh, so what will happen when the disk is full? We have to uh, go over obsolete uh, segments and erase them. Sometimes uh, we will uh, find completely obsoleted segments. So none of the mappings are valid anymore. When we uh, see those, we can mark them as to be uh, deleted. So we can directly erase them as soon as we understand them uh, as invalid, uh, sorry, uh, as obsolete. However, uh, when uh, we have fragmented segments, only one block is active. Uh, so we have such many segments. We have to uh, have some sort of garbage collection, uh, find an empty segment, uh, where the segments are uh, moved to those empty segments and the remaining parts are erased. So this LSFS idea uh, was uh, generalized into, extended into uh, living uh, embedded systems like uh, Android, uh, JFFS, F2FS, EFS, uh, like Samsung and so on. So we have many vendors. Uh, in Android, we are using a version of uh, this called YAFFS2. Okay. Uh, for uh, distributed system, the things get more complicated because um, the, what user expect is the transparent access to the uh, files. Uh, so the problem is not uh, the S file structure on hard disk anymore. It is some networking protocol also we will have uh, that means we have communication, the protocols, and worse than that, we have failures of network, power failures, crashes on the server and client side, and how to recover them will be an issue. So we will have uh, the server will, will work as a file server, and the client will be the operating system, uh, and it will have some uh, protocol to follow and uh, access the files. Uh, we have uh, NFS, uh, originated by some, uh, some microsystems, uh, SMBFS by Microsoft. We have, uh, for larger uh, cluster-based systems, we have Luster, uh, Google File System for having a large number of workers and distributed uh, access. Andrew file system again for uh, distributed access. 
So NFS and SMBFS are uh, for uh, smaller scale. Lustre is, uh, Lustre is close to each other. Uh, Lustre and Google is close to each other. Uh, scale and NFS is more distributed. Google Python is also distributed. Uh, one example is NFS, so uh, I will go skip this one uh, briefly. So uh, the idea in NFS is an interesting design, it's just stateless. That means uh, the server doesn't keep any state. So usually when you open a file in the client, server should keep the state so that when you ask for the next couple of blocks, it should give you the next couple of blocks, but it is not uh, similar, it's not that way in NFS, it is stateless. That means uh, each client request contains the file uh, on the other side plus the offset. So without opening, you can directly, if you know the file handle, you can access the file in any way you like because of the stateless nature. Thanks to that, in case of a failure, server failed and recovered, the client can uh, go on from where it is left. Uh, so uh, the open is only for looking up a file and getting that handle. And once handle is known, the communication can continue. Uh, so the crash recovery or failure uh, recovery will be much more easier in the stateless case. Otherwise, we have to recover the state and so on. Uh, NFS is based on some mechanism we call RPC, Remote Procedure Call, and uh, it is used uh, directly, it, it is available in most of the Unix alikes. Uh, in uh, Microsoft Word, we have uh, SMB file system, uh, another extension. Uh, so, uh, another implementation, another complete implementation. So, this list is a list of operating systems supported by a typical Linux system. Uh, so we, some of them we uh, mentioned uh, previously, some of them are specific, uh, some of them are um, pseudo file system, uh, some of them are older file systems like Minix, uh, some of them are render specific like XFS by Silicon Graphics, I believe. RiserFS in it is another implementation, QNX is uh, render specific and so on. Uh, as you can see, this is a large number of file systems supported. That means uh, we have a modular structure providing different uh, versions of uh, different implementations of file system can be alive in the same system at the same time. Uh, in order to provide that, uh, we need an abstraction layer. And that uh, abstraction layer is called VFS, virtual file system. Uh, so, mounting a file system in such a structure means uh, this, uh, the actual implementation of file system is isolated, so we don't have this uh, volumes, etc. So, we uh, can uh, grow file system anywhere we like, in any uh, file system type we like. So, mounting is such an operation. Uh, so, you are, for example, you have a file system like this one at the left, and you have another file system here. By mounting, uh, and uh, this is your root file system, this is another partition. So this is root partition, partition A, partition B. Partition A is, partition B is mounted here. at this position, home. So all user directories are now here. And partition B is mounted in USL lib so that all files here, Python will be available, USL lib Python. So uh, seeing desktop is available as home seeing desktop with this mount operation. 
uh, and the user is not aware of what is going on, which uh, file is on which file system. It is completely transparent uh, and maintained by the uh, system administrator. This way. And the virtual file system, uh, the idea is the abstraction of uh, many implementations of file systems is provided by the, the kernel in order to make a kernel's life easier. So he doesn't have to bother with different types of opens, different types of reads, different types of allocation in new block and so on. So kernel uh, implements the file system as a module and that module can be loaded by uh, the file system independent layers. So they, uh, have, had a, they have a uniform interface to access them. So basically our user processes make, makes this uh, POSIX compliant open read write or read directory, change directory, make directory and so on type of system calls. And the file handles are adjusted so that if, if it is a fat file system, it will have some fat behavior. If it is Unix file system, it will have Unix behavior and so on. So this abstraction, which is file system independent part, communicates in the same way to all user space program, programs and system calls. And file system dependent layer implements the uh, actual function calls that is aware of the, the hard disk geometry and file system geometry inside of it. So this uh, POSIX calls are uh, transferred into concrete file system calls uh, by this uh, file system uh, dependent parts and how it uh, is possible. So we, uh, instead of an I node in Unix, we can call it a V node, a virtual node or virtual file identifier, whatever you like to call it. So when you uh, open a file, depending on the underlying operate, uh, the file system, it will give you a handle of that specific uh, file system. So uh, our entry to this file system word is PCV, process control block. If you remember, we have a file descriptor table and each entry in the file descriptor table will give you the file structure, which keeps the state information of opened file by the process. And in that one, if you remember, we have DOP, which has number of references, the file offset and so on. We have a V node. V node is the pointer to the actual file. That actual file uh, structure uh, is created uh, per instance of a different file in that uh, operating system. So currently there might be 10 processes uh, with, uh, which are opening hundreds uh, of distinct files. That means you will have hundreds distinct Vino structures allocated in kernel's memory. And this uh, stack files are pointing, pointing to them. And those vnodes have one abstraction layer, which is the file system operations structure. Uh, in a, a completely object-oriented uh, operating system implementation, this can be handled by this, some sort of C++ polymorphism. But in C implementation, what we do is we provide an extra redirection. We have uh, function pointers here open, read, write, see their function pointers. And they have the content of the actual file system implementations. So this file is on a file, FAT uh, file system. That means uh, the open operation is FAT open, read operation is FAT read, write is FAT write, and so on. So that when you open such a file, FAT open will be called. If you read such a file, FAT read will be called, and so on. Uh, so, uh, as the uh, file system independent layer uh, call, what we do is from PCV, we go to file this table, file descriptor table one, go to V node, from V node we get V operations, uh, read and call it. When we make a call without knowing the actual operating uh, file system behind it, 
we can uh, continue our operation. But actual uh, fire system dependent part is knowing what a FAT is, where is the FAT, and how to access a FAT file, randomly access the, the, the location of that file, and so on. In that way, we can have many file systems can be alive at the same operating system. Each file system implementation introduces its, its own set of implementations. Uh, and when you look up a, a file mounted in some path, and if that path is on that file system, you have such a V node is created with filling those V node structures. So this is a more uh, complicated pic uh, picture. We have two processes. The first process has two fast structures. Two of them are dubbed some way, some way. And uh, first one is pointing to this V node. The other one is pointing to this V node. And both of them are fat, so they are pointing to fat operation structure. If we had, for example, Unix in that case, you will have a different VNode operations and our VNode will point to that. But in this ca case, both uh, files are FAT files and pointing to them. In the other process, uh, we open the same file. However, this uh, process uses offset 10, current state. This one is at offset zero. So when we uh, write that file, we call VNode V operations right in 10th byte or block, whatever you like. Uh, this one will write the, or, or it is read only, so it is read the zeroth block again. Uh, so this is how uh, the first block, sorry, not zero. Uh, so this is how we uh, have the operations and make this distinction. So each file system introduces its own VNode operations and its own implementations on hard disk. Uh, at boot time, we have the root file system, and then other file systems, as they are mounted or their modules are introduced, they are registers and registered in VFS. Uh, so when uh, uh, all those functions are registered along with the loaded module, uh, if someone opens a file like that and we have a lookup operation, and by traversing the mount positions as well, we follow them and at the end we will reach to that file system and we do open of that uh, file system implementation. Uh, so this is uh, basically the file system implementation and how file systems work in an operating system. Uh, but we have an, uh, Another important uh, issue with file systems, which is the crash recovery, because our systems may have power failures, as we had a couple of minutes ago. Uh, we have a power failure, and thank, uh, thankfully, I have a battery. If I didn't have a battery, it was a desktop system, I may have my file system uh, metadata lost. So I lose, lose all of the cash. Uh, I don't uh, care much about the non-written uh, data content because it is going to be incomplete anyway. Uh, of course, uh, if I close the file, I expect them to be completed. But uh, I can assume that it is uh, Inevitable. However, uh, metadata is important because if metadata data corrupts, I will lose files. In, in addition, I will lose the integrity of the file system. So I will end up in uh, invalid uh, links. And if I follow them, I will end up in uh, infinite uh, loops, corrupted data, and so on. Uh, we can have garbage on disk or dangling references will end up in uh, infinitely following invalid pointers on the scan of uh, strange uh, operations. So let us look into uh, the operations uh, closer. Uh, for example, deletion of a file in a, a UFS is 
we have to clear data blocks to zero for security purposes because someone else could have opened the file containing those data blocks and will end up uh, containing our data. Uh, of course, you can uh, do this also in allocation stage. So this is a little bit uh, blurry here. You may choose to do that in allocation. So when, as soon as you allocate it, uh, you can clear it. This is another uh, approach. Uh, you need to mark data blocks as free on the bitmap. So in the allocation bitmap, you will mark them as free. Uh, since it is a file deleted, the inode will be uh, marked as free on the bitmap. And uh, a directory entry should be referring to that inode, the file. So we need to update or delete that directory entry from that. Uh, same similar uh, scenario, but in the creation case, I am allocating one block. So I will mark data block allocated in the allocation table, write as content. I need to allocate an inode block and that inode block will refer to this data block. Uh, I will need to write that inode content and I need to uh, update a directory block so that create a new entry to this new inode. So yeah, we have those issues that we have that many uh, writes, updates in the disk. Uh, so the order of the steps is not much important, but when we have crashes, we can have different scenarios possible. So this is an hypothetical case. I did this last step and forgot those, no, not forgot, sorry, uh, but uh, cannot do these three operations. Those three operations cannot be done. But I delete directory entry. That means file is not cleaned. It is not marked as free. The data blocks are not marked as free and the inode is not uh, marked as free. So that means as a result of this crash, I have a file which isn't uh, accessed by any directory. Okay, so the data blocks, the file exists actually, but it is a ghost file. I don't have any access to that through traversal of the file system. So this is one case. The second case is, I uh, marked the inode as free on the bitmap, but couldn't finish the others. There is a directory referring to that inode, but that inode is marked as free and its data blocks are also intact. They are accessible. Uh, what will happen? What may happen? The worst thing that may happen is since it is free, I can use it for another directory. That inode can be used for another file. So my uh, home owner homework 2.c file is pointing to a new file, a new strange file. And that new strange file can be a cat picture, for example. I was expecting to get my homework too, but I'm getting a cat picture. Uh, and the worst thing is if I delete that cat picture, uh, legally, completely, my homework 2.c will point to some invalid inode that will be a dangling reference. Uh, I completed data block free on bitmap, but couldn't complete the rest. That means that the data will be visible as free, but there is a directory pointing to inode, inode pointing to those data blocks. So I have my homework 2.c, which consists of 10 data blocks, but they are uh, marked as free so that some other file can use it. So first two blocks used by cat picture, the second three is, the third and fourth is used by log and so on. So when I can open my homework.2.c, 
but I see garbage inside. And again, uh, this content can be overwritten by someone else and even some uh, other uh, users, so I can access the other users' data as well. Uh, in this scenario, if it is uh, done that way, I lose uh, the, my file content, so nothing else. It is not much serious, I just lose my file content, that's it. So uh, what I can do is I can do crash recovery. I can get I can get a sequence of consistency check and try to recover uh, this uh, problems. So in Unix we have FSCK. In Windows we have repair utilities providing that. Uh, the second choice is soft updates. We order this disk operations on device. If you remember, our C scan algorithm is doing it, the operations in any way it likes. But we overwrite that so that we force them to be done in some specific order. As a result, we can have some uh, ease of recovery. Uh, or we can use journaling, and we, we will talk about those three approaches. And the consistency check case, uh, we have uh, uh, in the super block, we uh, store that information that if it is unmounted or uh, ejected properly, if it is so, we don't do that. But if it is not, that means it's a power failure, so we make the consistency check. So uh, what we do is, inodes refer to data blocks. Uh, directories refer to inodes, and we have hardly count. Uh, they uh, should it that should match uh, the uh, number of directory entries. So hardly counts in the inode should match the number of directory entries mapping to that inode. We can uh, traverse all of the files, all of the inodes, and all of the allocated blocks and inodes so that we have some consistency. Uh, uh, FSCK can repair uh, by marking some of the files uh, located, truncated, uh, delete some of the files, uh, change the uh, hardening count, or find some of the files, uh, give some of the files new names under some specific directory called lost and found. However, it is too slow, especially if you have a very large file system, you will see that it will slow down the reboot time. You have to wait uh, like 10 minutes just booting for booting your system. So how uh, we can do that? We can create basically in any case of this uh, number of uh, references versus number of entities, we can count both of them. So for example, uh, the INOs refer to data blocks. So we can count number of refer refer references to data blocks and number of inodes and we uh, check that. So in the allocation bitmap, we see the number of references. Zero means it is free, one means it is allocated. So the, we should have either zero or one in the allocation bitmap. But if we traverse the inodes, we will see a different number. We will see if that are uh, those two numbers are consistent. So basically, we will have that. Uh, the blocks in use are free bitmap. Uh, in case of uh, FAT, this can be larger than, uh, those numbers can be uh, larger than uh, one actually, okay. So this is uh, the blocks in use. So that means, uh, sorry, this is uh, the free list or free bitmap. And this is the inodes referring to bitmap. In the FAT case, a uh, number of directories referring to uh, FAT blocks. Uh, so these are consistent in this case. One zero one zero zero one one zero. So it is the just the negation of the value. In this B case, one zero one zero. So we have an issue here. Otherwise, it is. Rest is con uh, consistent. 
here we have an issue here at this two. So this issue is uh, the block is has no refers, no inode is uh, refer referring that, but it is not free. So no one is using, but it is not free. So this is the case. In this case, we have uh, no one is uh, referring, but it is uh, twice free. So it is listed in twice in the free list. This is uh, the free list uh, types of implementations. It is possible. We can have uh, double occurrences of the same number in the free list. Um, it is a rare case anyway. And in this one, we have a block is referred by two inodes. So same data block is used by two files. It is something strange. So let us look at uh, those three cases, basically. First case is nothing wrong case. So in this one, uh, so we have it is not free, but no one is using, but it is uh, not free. So what we can do is we can mark this as free. That's it. Okay. Not used, but not free. So let's make it free. And this is the way we get rid of it. Uh, so this is usually harmless. There is no integrity problem here, but it uh, wastes space. So simply we can get rid of that this way. <laughs> Uh, duplicate uh, free that case is as it's it is rare uh, because in bitmap it is either one or zero two is not possible but in the free list it is possible so you have to rebuild the free list out of this previous list okay so the blocks in use list is used to uh, construct the free list or in case of fat we traverse all of the fat entries to build up this uh, list uh, so traverse all of the files in use and based on that we determine that number. Uh, D is duplicate data block so two inodes are referring to same file or two director entries in fact referring to same file. So what we should do is we should in order not to lose any data we have an extra free block. We copy create a clone of that copy of that block in the new block and we will call them a new file and inform the user about that. Okay. But usually we will have some garbage data in most of the cases. In the directory case, we have the same uh, problem. We will have directories referring to inodes uh, and inodes are allocated or not. And in the inodes, we have also the the reference count. So you have number of references in directories. Uh, so we will have the counter. We can count all of them. Link count in the inode and allocation of the inode. So we have those three information should be uh, consistent. If the link count in the inode is greater than the counter, uh, that means uh, if I delete the file in all of the directories, link count will be still one. So it should, it isn't, it is not going to be deallocated. So we can correct the link count based on the counter and continue. Uh, if counter is greater than link count, that means uh, link count is, uh, so we have five directories referring to the inodes, but the inode has four references. So we have five hard links, but we know it has four. Again, uh, in this case, if you uh, remove it uh, from the last, uh, sorry, if you remove it uh, from the uh, five, uh, out of five, if you remove it from the four directories, five will be deallocated and the last directory will have a dangling reference to the inode. So in order to get rid of that, we have to correct the link count again based on the counter. We have a special case, of course, link count is not zero. So no directory refers to it. 
uh, that means uh, there is an inode, but no one refers to it. We can create a new, brand new file, give it a default name or some random name, and put it in some special directory like lost and found, so that a user can look in that directory and if it's a usable file, a user can determine it. Uh, also, this uh, allocation information should be consistent with inode and so on. The same rules apply with data blocks in that case. So let us talk about, a little bit about soft updates. Uh, the soft updates is just a, a special uh, discipline of ordering operations. And if you uh, follow them, we will have uh, less operations for recovery. So the idea is never point to a structure before it has been initialized. So, for example, I allocate a data block and it is available ready, then I, in my inode, I am going to put a pointer to that. Uh, never reuse a resource before nullifying all previous pointers to it. Okay. So, uh, I have a resource, I am going to reuse it. That means, uh, I am going to mark that data block as free. I'm going to first update the inode, then mark it as free. Okay. So uh, this is the uh, first update the pointer, then free the content. So, so it is that idea on hard disk. All these operations are on hard disk. Uh, never reset the old pointer to a new resource before the new pointer has been set uh, for example renaming a file do not remove the old directory entry for an inode until after new directory entry has been written so write the new entry entry uh, with the new name and then remove the old directory if you follow those soft update rules we have one important uh, gain out of that advantage out of that uh, most of our consistency problems reduce to garbage. We don't have dangling references. We can only have garbage. That means um, that means there are uh, allocated but not accessible data. Some data blocks are allocated, seems allocated, but not accessible. Some inodes are allocated but not accessible. That means. I can reboot my I can boot my system, mount the file system without any problem, start using it, and solve those garbage problems later. So FSCK can work in background while I am using the file system. Soft updates provides you that. Uh, the third mechanism is commonly used by most of the contemporary file systems is the journaling. So the idea is this metadata operations are not directly written, not directly updated. They are written in some journal area of the hard disk. So some data blocks are reserved for that, some file is reserved for that. So the metadata operations, updates on inodes, updates on uh, the allocation bitmaps, for example, are updated on this uh, log region. And uh, after some periods of time, this log is written on hard disk and deleted. Deletion means log uh, is clear, everything is up to date. Uh, so uh, if you have a power failure, you have uh, already done operations, already carried out operations on hard disk, plus some not erased log. So what you do is you redo that log, you carry out all of the operations. That operations can be in some symbolic uh, set of operations, so up, uh, for example, clear, I know, and so on. So it's like basic records. Uh, you carry out those operations. And if you uh, redo that, your metadata will be again uh, intact without any problem. So redoing a journal is much more shortened than uh, fast to check and repair. Uh, the journaling is good for metadata, however, uh, if you repeat that also the content of the files, it will be too expensive. 
So what we have is mostly we have this uh, journal of uh, metadata only. Okay, so we provide this metadata uh, journaling uh, instead of a complete uh, full journal. Uh, Sunflower Systems allows you to uh, journal data as well, but it is uh, too expensive. It's because you are writing it uh, twice, write to journal, then write to force the disk. Uh, okay, so let us complete with uh, further uh, possibilities in the uh, file system. Uh, these are supported by some contemporary file systems and some uh, uh, newer implementations. Uh, most are not used by uh, regular uh, desktop user, but uh, for uh, server systems, as said, they might be useful. Uh, we can have uh, file compression, transparent file compression. We have transparent file encryption or all file system encryption, encryption support. We can have quotas, for example, in service scenarios, like in, in our department, we use uh, this uh, quota operation so that users' uh, space is limited. Logical volume management for dynamically changing uh, the volume data. So the growing shrinking of a file system with adding new hard disk is important, especially in uh, server setup. Uh, snapshots, uh, these, this is uh, popular in the last 10 years. Uh, the idea is I can get a snapshot of my file system and continue using that. And then I can, I can go back in time and access the state of my file system at that snapshot time. Uh, so it's like automate, automated backing up of the file system in, uh, uh, or if we have an, uh, for example, um, incident, during that instant, you can take the snapshot and uh, go check that instant in, back in time. Uh, in uh, MacOS, for example, they are doing that as a part of the application plus a combination of operating system called Time Machine. And uh, ZFS and BTFS in uh, Unix and Linux world, we have uh, that feature. Uh, we also have some virtual volumes as that can be uh, created in ZFS. Uh, copy on write is used in uh, especially this container-like architectures. So the idea is you can get uh, some base file system and your new file system will uh, build on top of that in copy on write fashion so that new the written data is uh, updated on the special partition. But if it is not on the special partition, it can go back to original partition so that we will have uh, from a base system, we can derive many different uh, updated versions of that file system. Uh, in container words like uh, Docker, it is called union file system and there are similar implementations of that. Uh, multiple streams and attributes, you can add extra data, versions, revisions, etc. in uh, the files, especially file version is something old, like in uh, 80s, some system, uh, file system supported that. And this is uh, some, uh, in addition that we can add extra information like keys, etc., sign, signature, and so on. So uh, I believe that's it uh, for today. Uh, thank you very much for listening. Uh, I will see you in another uh, recording. Bye-bye.